says, you know, to be be the change you want to see in the world. What did he mean by that? You know, what was the idea of that? I mean, we can talk about being the change in many <laughs> hundreds, if not thousands, of ways, and maybe all of us are doing that to to an extent. Um, change could mean anything from your 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 attitude toward government. It could mean your attitude toward self, your attitude toward family, all of these things. But I, for me, the common denominator that I have been feeling and I have been sensing, especially when I was developing today's talk, was that it is all attitude. It comes down to attitude. And what do I mean by that? Well, the whole idea... <clears throat> of spirituality and being the change we want to see in this world and this whole idea of awakening it really m must be within our thoughts it really must be within our thoughts because it, if we are the ones generating our reality if we are the ones that are experiencing any given moment at any given time and we are feeling an emotion from it it is coming from our thoughts and our attitude so for me I, I feel that the greatest thing that I have learned in being the change that I want to see in the world is to be open to new ideas, to be open and have an attitude of, of well, I can go through a, a line of adjectives to describe the right attitude, but I will say that um, the attitude needs, at minimum, needs to be open. It's, it's, it's an attitude of being open to, cha to open to change. How can we have change if you're not open to changing yourself? So that is something that we really must consider when we're talking about being the change we wish to see on the earth. <coughs> Pardon me. So if we are to choose to set out on this journey, set out on this journey to change the world and to change ourselves and to be that change that we want to see on the earth, you know, we, it is something that we choose to do. It's something that, it's not something we're forced to. Well, maybe not all of us. <laughs> sometimes I feel that the universe forced me to put me in this position and sometimes that may happen with other people. You may find yourself uh, losing your job to go work for another company. I mean, sometimes the universe does have a little play in that. However, um, when we choose to acknowledge the fact that we are on a path of being the change we want to see on the earth, we have to ask ourselves, well, what is the change we want to see on the earth? Nobody really talks about this. And because it's such a an infinite uh, category, we can say we would like to see peace on Earth, which would mean getting rid of the military-industrial complex. We could say we want to end racism, which would mean you know educating the masses. Uh, we could say we want to see education for all people, and and again educating the masses. So there's all different kinds of change that we want to see on the on the in the world. So we have to ask ourselves first, well, what is the most important change that I would like to see on the earth? And of course, I took the biggest one of them all. I want to see everyone awaken. Uh that was my big thing 20 years ago and I'm still to this day living this karmic um promise. I guess, for lack of a better term, of I want to see the world awaken. That's the change I want to see. I want to live in a world where people have awakened to their inner nature, their inner, their inner um, love, their inner, their inner gentility, their inner humility, their inner healing ability, their inner psychicness, all of these things, all of these things. Whatever awakening might be for you, that's what it is for me. But, so, when we are asking ourselves, what is the change that we want to see? We, we really must come to a place to really understand this concept of being the change we want to see. First, you have to know what the change is. And what I would recommend for that is uh, really just think of the happiest moment you ever had in your life. And what I mean by that, it could be your wedding. It could be the birth of your child. It could be a childhood birthday party that you remember. 
Um, it could it could be a, a a trip on ecstasy that you had when you're in your twenties. Who knows? Whatever it is, but think of that moment when you felt the most elation, where you felt the most at peace, the happiest, the calmest, where there was no conflict, no anxiety. You know, where you felt completely in your realm of of comfortableness, and that will probably guide you to that idea of what the change will be. What is the change I want to see? I want everyone to be happy. That's one thing. But I mean, I'm just giving you an example. That could be one of the things that you choose that you would like to see as this great change. Um, Some of us, uh, like myself, uh, I was very, um, I guess, blessed for lack of a better term, when I had my out-of-body experiences with uh, the Emissaries of Light, and they showed me what I didn't want first. And you're going to find this paradigm uh, very, it overlays into everyone uh, pretty much that I know who is a speaker on this topic, uh, that we go through this whole um, out-of-body thing where we see, you know, the conflict, we see the war, we see the destruction, and that by knowing what you don't want also, and I guess this is the point I'm trying to say, is that by knowing what you don't want also is a, a stimulus to guide you in the right direction of what changes you do wish to see. Um, now, i got to say, and this is kind of a, a disclaimer, I guess, we got to ask ourselves, is the change beneficial to humanity or is it only beneficial to making me feel good? Now that's that's where we get a little get a little bit messed up, you know. Uh, well, sadly, a lot of this law of attraction stuff over the last five six years has been all about me, 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 and me getting a bigger house and me getting a car and getting a better job and you know getting the right lover. But it doesn't work that way. We're not there anymore. I'm sorry, this is not 1984. You know, we cannot live in this Reaganomic materialistic world anymore. We are at the the end game of humanity at this point. We are at the point where you are going to be motivated by service to self or motivated by the joy of doing service to others and waiting to reap the rewards for that. And not even waiting because they're instantaneous. However, the reality of it is is that we got to look beyond the uh, the personal desire versus the personal and spiritual needs of ourselves and others. So, as we are as we are moving toward this change, you know, is the change going to benefit the world? I guess is what it comes down to. And of course, most of us that are on this path are thinking that we're thinking or feeling that it is something we want to do to help the world, and we do that by setting an example. Now, how do we get to set the example? How do we get to be the change? <laughs> how do we get to literally walk the talk? And that's where this. Uh, <laughs> The, the the inner horrors of the reality of how we were raised and what we think and, and our shadow self and all that comes into play. So as I said earlier, being the change that we want to see in the world is about attitude. But first we have to deal with the attitude that we have presently. And what I mean by that is, uh, well, I can only share with you what I have experienced myself and hopefully uh, my experience will will maybe trigger a thought that works for you. But for me, when I had, when I had my awakening, uh, when I, again, when I was like 22 or 23, I was still very young. I was still uh, very um, materialistic. Uh, I was still doing very, very well financially. And I didn't want to give any of that up, even though I knew better. Even though I knew better. And I'm not saying I had to give it all up. But at that time, I was more interested in, yeah, well, the typical thing, you're 22, getting high, getting late, and, and uh, going out and partying. I mean, that's basically what you do when you're 22. I know that's what I did. But um, this attitude, and where did this attitude come from? This was the attitude that I had. Where does this attitude come from? Well, when we're, as, as I said, when we are looking for, uh, you know, understanding the change, we have to look at our attitude because by acknowledging the parts of our attitude that are not cohesive with the workings of your of your future, of your of your goal, 
of living the change, of your goal of being the change, of your goal of being an example, it, we really must get very honest about where this present attitude that we have comes from. Um, I remember being very angry in my youth. I remember being very angry five years ago when I found out about the New World Order. <laughs> you know, it's, it, 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 we need to understand where this attitude comes from. How did we get the attitude? It comes from, first and foremost, our parents. What did our parents teach us? What can we take that works for this new paradigm that we're trying to create for ourselves? What can we take that works? Um, my parents always taught me not to lie. That works. Uh, my parents always taught me to love your family. That works. Uh, my parents always taught me to uh, live within my means. Well, that works. So, you know, there are lots of lessons that our family gave us that works, but there are also a lot of behaviors that we have been conditioned to through our family and our upbringing that don't work. And we have to be brave enough to stop the cycle, so to speak, of not allowing that just because our family does it, just because our parents taught us, doesn't mean that's the right thing and the right way to think, especially as you're creating this new paradigm for yourself and creating this new journey uh, being the change you want to see in the world. Well, my parents were, um, well, at least my father was very um, elitist. Uh, he didn't think I should hang out with people that were of a lower economic standard of us. That to me, that's wrong now. But growing up, that was drilled into my head. For me as an adult, that is the wrong, wrong thing to say to me nowadays. Uh, my father was somewhat of a racist. Uh, so, you know, you really should hang out with your own kind, you know. Um, you know, certain things like that. And uh, I know that many of us have the same things that our family taught us that just don't go in keeping with the greater, higher calling, the greater, higher purpose. So that's one adi- one way we get attitude or the attitude that we're starting with. And the other way, another way we're getting the attitude that we're starting with is the media, of course. And I know we talk about this a lot, but this goes very well with today's talk, is that when you are a small child, you're immediately, especially children in today's world, are immediately uh, indoctrinated into the whole, um, I guess, collective media consciousness, because that's really what it has become. It's a collective media consciousness. And by, by, you know, even watching Sesame Street, you know, how all the kids watch Sesame Street, uh, everything that uh, is in all the children's magazines or in the children's, and I know today is very different from when I grew up, and it's probably 800 times worse, but we have to understand that yet this does influence the attitude. So all of our younger listeners out there in your 20s and 30s, that grew up on Barney and Power Rangers and all of these things, that, believe it or not, that has an effect on your present attitude. Who are the heroes? Who are the villains? Um, what is uh, an acceptable way of living? You know, a lot of the uh, violence is very acceptable because of the fact that it is acceptable to children. And we have to really think about the idea, especially when it comes to the media, uh, is the wor- is the world that I am trying to create, is the change that I am trying to be going to involve violence on another human being? So our whole attitude of violence, uh, that's another example. Our whole attitude of violence needs to change. Our whole attitude of sexuality needs to change. I, I grew up in a very Hispanic household, uh, it is very inappropriate, A, to date out of your race, and definitely to date same sex. Well, things have changed. And not only have they changed, it, it should have been that way thousands of years ago, but the reality of it is we are grateful. Uh, I am grateful we're living in a time now where interracial or same sex is becoming very commonplace because it is, when it comes down to, all about love. And that's really what we're all about, especially... Uh, when we're talking about being the change that we wish to see in the world. Other other attitudes that we may need to look back on that need to change are, are economics. Um, we are always taught to, you know, well, 
I'm sure by now uh, we're learning not to trust the banks, but I remember growing up, it was all about getting to know your banker, getting a relationship with your bank, uh, being able to get a good mortgage, you know, when you grow up, getting a student loan so you can go to school, you know, all of these things that, that were ingrained into us that seem, seem to be normal, but now are just not in play with, in, in keeping with this new consciousness that we are choosing to uh, be a part of that we are choosing to to create to be to be the change. So we have to ask ourselves our attitude on economics. What is my attitude on economics? What is my attitude about money? Is more and more going to make me happy? Is the idea of me working sixty hours a week for minimum wage going to make me happy? Is working uh, sixty hours a week for three hundred thousand dollars a month going to make me happy? You know, so we. Economics does have a lot to do with our attitude. Um, again, another thing to consider in our attitude is our health. How do we see ourselves? Uh, is um, eating healthy important? Is exercise important? Is uh, smoking, drinking, all of these things, is this a part of our, is our attitude jaded from the way that we were brought up? Um, I grew up with a grandfather who, at 90 years old, was still doing shots of rum and drink and smoking cigars, and he lived to be 100. So, you know, so it was very common, you know, in my household to see old men drinking and smoking, and they lived a pretty long time. In my, you know, back then, I don't know if that, that would happen nowadays, but the reality of it is, is that it is the attitude that smoking and drinking was considered acceptable behavior. Uh, for you know, for my family now, is it acceptable for me presently? Yes, it is. Do am I working towards changing that? Of course I am. But the reality again is the attitude: Are we open to changing it? You know, am I open to changing the idea of giving up uh, drinking and smoking? Uh, you know, the, and then we have to look at the other side of the coin of, let's say, marijuana or natural drugs and hallucinogens. We were raised that they were very negative, that they were, you know, bad for you and have scary and gateway drugs and you'll end up in the gutter with a crack whore, you know, and, and, and that's the reality of it. That's what is ingrained into our, into our lives. Uh, I know many people and I'm very grateful that uh, people within my family that are younger, they don't want anything to do with drinking or drugs or anything like that. And, you know, that's good for them and I'm glad to see that. But I will say it shouldn't be out of fear. It should be out of choice. And, uh, again, the whole attitude, the idea of how did we get here? What is working in my psyche that creates my idea of the world around me? Um, we can go into our attitude about sports. We can go into our attitudes about um, entertainment, all of these things. What? But how is it going to apply in the world that you are choosing to change and changing into what? Where is that all going to fit? So we do want to ask ourselves, you know, how did we get this attitude? What is the change that we want to see? Um, well, the next thing that I want to get into, and uh, actually we're coming up, we're going to be taking short breaks here, and uh, we're going to take a short break right now, but when I come back, uh, we're going to talk about uh, how do we how do we change it, which I think is probably the most important part, and uh, why are we changing it? So the how and the why uh, will pick up. In